Well, welcome back. It's 2002 Honda CRV. Uh, call from somebody I know. It's kind of a little bit of a lesson of buying a used car. If you're going to buy a used car and you don't really know cars, make sure you take it to a mechanic. Let them look at it. So they bought this car, and within a day, the money light came on. Uh, so came over. This is month, maybe two months ago. And I pulled codes, and it had, you know, a list of codes. The, the, the worst one, uh, at least initially, is the P0420, uh, low catalytic efficiency. So uh, there's plenty of videos out there of what to test. I did a whole bunch of tests. I looked at fuel trims. I looked at the O2 sensors and how they responded. It's tried to check to see if there were any exhaust leaks, fed propane uh, into it while I was running to see how the... Um, the capacity of the uh, catalytic converter, uh, the converter is bad, it needs to be replaced, it's got a hundred and at least 150,000 miles, I forget exactly what it is, um, and, a, and a, a host of other codes. Um, this is uh, some of which I think are related to the catalytic converter being bad. Uh, unfortunately, um, this car uh, they're pretty picky about catalytic converters in general, you want to use OEM, but for this car it's two thousand dollars for the catalytic converter for this car. There's no way you're going to put a catalytic converter in a sixteen-year-old car. It's worth maybe three thousand dollars and put a two thousand dollar part in it. You're just not going to do it. Uh, so I, we got a uh, aftermarket, the best one. <clears throat> excuse me, the best one I thought I could find uh, with the best warranty guarantee for uh, working for twenty-five thousand miles and a five-year construction warranty. I'll, I'll show you the part number later for that. Uh, so we're gonna replace this catalytic converter uh, in this car. What I found out later, um, after talking with the owner of this car again, they went back and this was a dealer auction car. Uh, they didn't know it when they bought it, but the dealer knew it had a bad cat in it. Uh, and that's probably why they didn't fix it, because it's not, they're not going to put a $2,000 part in a $3,000 car. It's just not worth it. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, whoever bought it from the auction cleared the codes these people didn't they didn't know uh, how to check that or to check that and unfortunately they got stuck with it basically uh, I don't know it runs pretty good it's not um, bogging down or anything but it is the cat needs to be replaced uh, so we're gonna go underneath hopefully not break any bolts we'll see and uh, replace this catalytic converter so this one right here we're gonna go for first back of the catalytic converter it's from this side's pretty much gone I'm going to have to figure out how to do with that, and, and then we'll go for the top one after this. But I'm going to heat these. Settling will be the best. I don't have an acetylene torch. I have MAP, so we're going to use MAP. I'm going to try to heat that up really good and uh, break it loose. I'm just going to quench that. Careful with your eyes on this. Don't get close to it. It's going to just blow stuff off of there. The big thing I'm trying not to do here is break them off, but these are uh, 11 millimeter for this one. This is the one that's probably in, that one's totally gone almost, but I don't have my gun. This is a smaller gun and it's not turned all the way up. Hey, look at that. Got one. Remember, these are really hot. You can see, hopefully you can see how there's not much left of that. It's just destroyed, so we'll replace them, but it did come off. That's the big thing. Now we're going to go to the top one. Uh, a little harder to get at up here. Maybe I'll try to move my light and give you some light from that side. This one up here. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see that guy up in there? Yeah, I think you can. But same deal. Get 
Had to turn the gun up on one on that one, but it did come off. This is what we want to see. Protection, gear protection on for this. If I just knocked it out of the way or not, but kind of blocked it right here. to see really you can see the flange there how it's separated that's a good thing um, let's go to the front even get this to focus but we're under the front of the car up at the front of the catalytic converter where it goes up into the exhaust manifold and there's two spring bolts you see the one on that side one on that side you can get in there with heat uh, if you have a uh, flexible a hose like I do so I'm gonna actually I just tested this one on this side this spring bolt and it actually came right loose which is unusual but I'm happy and I did soak these for a couple days so um, this one I'm gonna hit it with some heat first well there it is the old one had one casualty one of the front spring bolts broke so I'm gonna have to heat that some more but it, it didn't break off uh, flush so I should have plenty to get a hold of I'm gonna heat it quench it a few more times see if I can uh, break it loose and get it out of there I hope so all right I've got the new uh, catalytic converter in place I don't have them tighten the back bolts on it yet front bolts are tight put a new exhaust uh, gasket in here at the front put the two new spring bolts replace the two that came out basically I'm not gonna try to reuse them they're just one I broke I was able to get it out uh, with a stud extractor but uh, you can see they're pretty corroded. Don't, don't reuse them, get a new kit. So I have new ones in there, it's all done. Uh, I'm gonna put the O2 sensor and the air uh, fuel ratio sensor back in. Not back in, new ones. So, not an OEM cat. Like I said before, too, way too expensive, just can't justify the cost. OEM, O2 sensor and air fuel sensor though. Um, Denso makes is uh, original equipment for this car that's what's going back in it otherwise you probably will have problems so O2 sensors in the back on this one uh, it does come with some uh, high temp anti-seize so it's got anti-seize on the threads don't get it on the element you want to just keep it on the threads make sure it's only on threads That's it. I'm going to tighten these bolts up. Uh, as I mentioned before, I didn't put their studs you can get that, you know, look kind of like a wheel, look like a wheel stud kind of, but bolts will do fine. These are stainless too. Uh, not that I ever plan on taking this off, but it should hold up to rust a little better than just a normal bolt. I'm going to tighten them up, get a uh, 10 millimeter, put that back, and we're done. That's it. Uh, we're going to take it out, test it, uh, test drive it, make sure everything's good. Make sure everybody's happy. So that's about two days later. It's been through driving cycles. I just wanted to show no codes present, which is really what I wanted to see. And what else I'm going to look at here is the uh, generic functions readiness monitors. So here you can see the readiness monitors. And the one I really care about for the catalytic converter is that one right there. I'm trying to get it to you. And catalyst. Third one. Uh, second one, actually. Test complete. That's what we wanted to see. The only one that's not complete is if EVAP system hasn't run through enough, uh, hasn't been run enough yet to complete that. And no codes. Testing complete. And that's fixed. That's a good thing. That's what we wanted to see. Well, that's it. We got a text back from the owner a couple days after I finished this up, and um, he was able to get it through inspection. Passed with no problems, which means the EVAP uh, <clears throat> readiness monitor clear as well. 
you have to do this. Uh, I hope it helps you out. If you like the video, subscribe below. Thanks for watching.